Hey, Brennan here. Welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. Got a brand new series here on the channel. It is my mock draft landing spot grade show. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a mock draft or, uh, that has been released on the internet and I'm going to give landing spot grades from a dynasty and fantasy perspective as though you were in your rookie drafts. All right, we're going to take a look at Dane Brugler's two round mock from the athletic. It's mid January. He dropped a mock draft. Mock drafts are going to be hot and heavy here on out for the next two or three months. And on this channel, I'm going to be grabbing each and every one I can find and doing shows just like this one where I'm going to give landing spots grades to the players. All right. So yes, landing spots are important. I believe they matter. Matter. Of course, we're going to draft our talented players early in tier one prospects. But as we get to the later part of the first round, second round, especially the third, fourth, fifth rounds, landing spots matter. Uh, opportunity matters. Coaching matters. Uh, offensive scheme matters, right? For our dynasty players to get on the field, opportunity is key. So with that in mind, I'm going to go through um, the mock draft that Dane did, and we're going to give landing spot grades. Like I said, I'm going to be doing this show uh, for a lot of mock drafts as I come across. So you play dynasty, you play fantasy, you're looking for a YouTube channel out there that's going to give you a ton of different rookie content. Please hit that subscribe button. I got scouting reports on here. I got rookie reports, all sorts of good stuff. Even talking and looking at the 2025, 2026 draft classes as well. So welcome to the channel if this is your first time here. All right, so let's get to it, man. If number is overall pick number one in Dame Brugler's mock draft is he has Caleb Williams going to Chicago, and I'm going to give that a B landing spot grade. All right, so this is the assumption that they're going to trade fields away, and uh, you know they're going to get a bunch of draft capital, right? They're going to hit the reset button, a new regime kind of in town in Chicago, and I guess they're going to just take a reset and take Caleb Williams in this particular draft. You know, he's got some uh, great playmaker and more. I'm sure they would add more wide receiver talent as well, but listen, uh, this is kind of a consensus mock location, the Chicago Bears taking uh, Caleb Williams. So um, I'm going to give him a B. All right. Plus, they got a new OC. They just came, uh, they just hired Shane uh, Waldron, comes from Seattle, who's really helped Geno Smith, too, um, as a side note. So, uh, you know, again, an offensive minded coach coming in, being able to, or new OC anyway, coming in to um, help Caleb Williams get off the ground. With his second selection, he goes, uh, he has Drake May going to the Washington Commanders. I'm going to give you, give this a B plus landing spot. I love Drake May, big athletic, big arm. He's got weapons there. He's got Terry McLaurin on the outside. He's got a good running game. Um, he's got some uh, Dotsons there as well. So he's got a decent opportunity or, you know, to, to be able to be successful, um, you know, with some pass catchers there. And they got a new OC see that they're looking to possibly hire as their next uh, head coach. Bobby Slowick, he is the Texans OC who did a really nice job with CJ Stroud this year. So they're going to get a new quarterback in the draft, all new uh, regime, new ownership this year. Washington Commanders looking to reboot Drake May. I'm going to give him a B plus landing, especially if they get an offensive minded coach um, to help him develop. All right. Number three overall, Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, Dane has him going to New England. I'm going to give this a C plus. This is our like worst case scenario uh, with Marvin Harrison Jr., right? Um, just they're in a transition, right? Uh, Jared Mayo is a new coach. Bill Belichick out. They really don't listen. From an opportunity standpoint, he's going to be the guy. He's going to be the number one receiver because the wide receiver room is pretty bare, but they don't take a quarterback here. They're going to go with the best player available. They're going to pass on Jaden Daniels here, I guess Dane Brugler's mind, and take uh, you know Marvin Harrison Jr., which, listen, you want to draft the talent. Maybe next year they look for the quarterback, bring in a veteran this year. So C-plus might be a little light. Maybe I should be B um, because the opportunity is going to be there, but let's see who his passer is forced first before we get truly excited, okay? Because Landing spots matter, right? I mean, he doesn't have a quarterback on the roster, as I as I believe right now. Uh, with the fourth pick overall, Neighbors uh, going to the Cardinals. I give this a B-plus landing spot. He's been my wide receiver, too, um, all summer long, all before college football. That's the benefit of playing Devi. If you don't know what Devi is, it's basically just another fantasy game where we draft college players and put them on our taxi squads for our uh, – our NFL squad. So I've known Nate about neighbors for a long time. Listen, man, he is a yards after the catch monster. I think he's in a great opportunity. B plus Murray is going to be the QB. It looks like they're going to, you know, they got a new coach. Um, they're a rebuilding team that needs a wide receiver, one playmaker on that team. All right. So um, I like the landing spot 
Kyle Murray hopefully uh, will continue to progress and be um, a, a good fantasy quarterback as well. So we got a lot of offensive skill players here going off the board. Uh, number five overall, uh, uh, Bowers going to the Chargers. I give this an A landing spot. Everyone loves the landing spot in the Chargers, right? But listen, I really, really feel like if Herbert is going to take that next level, he needs a you know the next set of wide receivers slash pass catchers. Um, you know, Bowers is going to be a tight end. Obviously, he's a tight end coming from Georgia, but he's going to be put out wide. He's going to be a wide receiver in that space. They're not going to ask him to block, but he's going to be a great possession type receiver. I think for Herbert, um, you know, this is one of the best tight end prospects to come out in quite some time. You know, since Kyle Pitts, probably right. I mean, there was so much hype for Kyle Pitts. Another good example of how landing spot matters going to that offense and going to a dysfunctional organization, kind of getting caught up. Kyle Pitts never really kind of came to fruition. Same kind of prospect hype uh, that Bowers is getting was Kyle uh, Pitts uh, three, maybe three years ago. I guess it was three years ago. Man, time goes by fast anymore. Wow. Okay. With the sixth pick in the draft, Roma Dunze, he has going to the Giants. I give this a C plus landing spot grade. Um, listen, he profiles as an immediate plug and play player, right? They are looking for their number one receiver on that team. They need another one. I'm assuming Daniel Jones is coming back and going to be the quarterback um, of that team. So Adunze is going to be immediately coming in and demanding targets being the sixth overall pick in the draft. I assume um, I, I have a C plus Great, I guess, because it's just kind of hard to get really excited about a Giants pass catcher. Daniel Jones coming off the knee injury, and there's just a lot of unknowns in the Giants right now. All right, so wow, that's six players, offensive skill players coming right off the board. So we're going to skip one one pick here, and number eight overall, Jaden Daniels going to Atlanta. I give this a landing spot of an A. This team is loaded with weapons, um, potentially, potentially, Given, uh, I know they're out there looking for a new coach. As of right now, I don't know, you know, if they've hired anyone or not. But we got new coaches coming in. They got a great running game. Um, their offensive line, I don't think, is as bad as people made it out to be. Um, but he could arguably be the quarterback one with his rushing upside. If you haven't watched any Jaden Daniels highlights, I mean, he really emerged at LSU this year. Going to Atlanta, I don't see him falling to number eight. I think a team's going to jump up and grab Daniels. He's too exciting of a player. You got the top three quarterbacks, and then there's a teardrop. So if there's a team, I could see Atlanta actually you know, maybe jumping up in the draft. Nonetheless, we're not going to get caught up in that. I'm going to give that a landing spot of an A. All right. Brian Thomas Jr., pick number 17 overall, going to the Jaguars. I'm going to give this a B-plus rating. He's my number four receiver right now as we're in the early stages of the draft cycle. Um, check out my scouting report I dropped on this channel. I got all sorts of scouting reports on all these players that we've talked about on here, so go check them out. But he's got opportunity. I'm going to give him a B-plus rating here. Calvin Ridley's an undrafted free agent in 2024. Christian Kirk is under contract for two more years. Um, God, they have a good tight end down there. Um, but, you know, he's an outstanding vertical threat, and I think, you know, he is in a good situation to get immediate targets, um, you know, this year if they sign, if they did decide not to re-sign Calvin Ridley. All right, number 19 overall, J.J. McCarthy going to the Rams. I give this a landing spot grade of an A, all right? I mean, I think this kid has the intangibles and tools to be a starter in this league. I know there's a lot of polarization on J.J. McCarthy right now, but he lands in a great situation with the Rams. Stafford's going to be there for a couple more years. You got McVay, who's in one of these offensive-minded coaches. What a great opportunity. They should do what they did at Green Bay with love, Put J.J. McCarthy on the bench for two years. If he lands on a team like the Rams, I'm going to be taking him early and often because I just believe in in, in McVay, and uh, they always seem to rebound um, offensively, and I think it's just a good organization and a good place to to, to be. They're organized. There's stability, and that, that plays a role, I think, in a lot of these uh, players' success, um, just not on our fantasy teams, but in, in, you know, in real life as well. So number 29, last pick of the first round, Keon Coleman going to the Bills. I think everyone would give this a grade A. Um, you know, he's an athletic guy. I mean, the Bills, after losing to the Chiefs this week, you know, it's Diggs and, you know, Shaquille, Shakir uh, is a nice player. Uh, Gabriel can't see, Gabriel Davis can't seem to stay healthy. Give this a landing spot of an A on the Bills with the big arm um, of uh, Josh Allen and Keon Coleman. His specialty is winning down, down the field 50 50 balls. So um, like that matchup. All right, let's get to the second round. Maybe go through these a little quicker. 33. 
three overall. A.D. Mitchell going to the Panthers. I gave that a C minus. I think A.D. Mitchell for me is personally like a raw route runner, you know, to begin with. Um, so, and and I'm not the biggest Bryce fan, Bryce Young fan. I haven't been for a long time. Go back, check out my X account. I've been talking about his size and everything, and he may improve, but there's just a lot of dysfunction in that organization. I mean, they, they whiffed on Mingo last year. A.D. Mitchell probably isn't the player that I would take at the beginning of the uh, second round in this particular draft. So I'm going to give him a C-, minus. not a guy personally I'm going to be targeting a lot in my rookie drafts. Number 34 overall, Bo Nix going to the Patriots, all right? So we talked about earlier Marvin Harrison Jr. Junior, I didn't want to kind of spill the beans and uh, tell you, you know, that I knew this was happening on, on the on the mock, but I'm going to give this a landing spot of a B. I like Bo Nix. I mean, he's been a five year starter in college. He has a lot of experience. He's been inconsistent. He's, you know, he's not the most accurate passer all the time, but I think he's got the tools and the foundation that you know if he comes into a good system. You know, Jared Mayo is now the coach. He's a defensive minded coach, so he's going to have to get himself a really good OC that could potentially develop Bo Nix. Bo Nix again should marinate on the bench for a year. They should go out and get themselves a starter, um, you know, like a, just a veteran as a as a building block bridge and maybe, you know, um, give this kid some time. He's not going to be a, you know, a year one starter. I would never do that. I think he just sits on the bench and hopefully you have like another Jordan Love type prospect in a few years. All right, number 43, uh, a, a wide receiver. I really like Jalen Polk going to Atlanta. I'm going to give this a B minus grade. All right. I've been a, a Polk guy for a long time. Go on this YouTube channel, check out all the films that I have of Polk. But there's just a lot of mouths to feed with Pitts, um, you know, and all the other, you know, players you got in Atlanta right there. And, uh, you know, you got the backfield, those guys taking passes out of the backfield. Um, just a lot of mouths to feed. Jaden Downs is going to be a young receiver, but Polk, you know, I think could potentially really carve out a role. I'm just not ready to think that that could come out of production of year one. But he's a good possession receiver, strong hands, physically built. He will be a good security blanket for Jaden Daniels uh, in year one if he does absolutely get on the field. All right, we got a few more, five or six more picks here. Number 44 overall, Michael Penix Jr. going to the Raiders. I give this a B. I am not a Michael Penix Jr. Uh, believer. I, I'm not. That's not somebody I'm going to personally uh, target. Going to the Raiders, the, I give him a B because of the opportunity. Um there's just, I don't believe there's a starter on that roster right now. Um, does he start year one? I'm not sure, but it, you know, assuming you're in a super flex rookie draft, you're going to take a swing on the Raiders, uh, you know, with Michael Penix Jr. There are people out there that believe in him. So he'll most likely be a, a probably late first, early second, mid second round rookie pick, but I'm going to give him a B. Lad McConkey going over number 49. I think I love this. My first A plus of the draft. I freaking love Lad McConkey. I've been a fan of his for a long time again go check out my x account with all the videos i've popped on here all since last summer this kid i think is arguably the best route runner in the class going to the Bengals, playing with joe burrow having chase take the number one d big sign me up a plus for mcconkey in the Bengals. i don't think we need to really speak about anything more about that landing spot number 54 overall troy franklin going to the browns i give this a c plus listen troy franklin is a great space creator he's in my top five wide receivers but Elijah Moore and Tillman are unknown. Um, probably I should probably give him a B instead of a C plus. Probably maybe on the video give a B slash C plus. But look, he's a vertical threat. I'm just not the biggest Watson fan. He's been really inconsistent since he's returned from all his shenanigans. Um, and it's the Browns. And I think Cooper, he has one more year. He'll be here in 2024. His cap hits too big. But after that, I think they can get out from under him um, if they don't feel like playing, you know, using him anymore. But so there is an opportunity because Moore hasn't really emerged. Cedric Tillman last year, a player that I like coming out of Tennessee, he hasn't panned out. But anyway, C plus for Troy Franklin. All right, the first running back off the books here, uh, number 56 overall. Dane has him going to the Cowboys. I give this an A rating. It's a risky pick from a player coming off an ACL, but he was a top three running back for me coming into the class before his ACL injury. And the Cowboys surgeon, apparently, if you read Dane's uh, mock draft, did the surgery on his knee. So there's a familiarity there of they know about Jonathan Brooks, how well the surgery goes, and it's an ACL injury. So it's not that big a deal. Um, but I give him an A for landing spot because Tony Pollard's an unrestricted free agent, never understood the hype and buzz over that guy. Um, he'll be on another team next year, most likely. 
A for Brooks going to the Cowboys. Three more picks here. 57th overall, Xavier Worthy going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I give that a C plus. He is a speedy receiver. I question his physicality just a little bit, but Mike Evans is an unrestricted free agent next year. I'm assuming Baker Mayfield is coming back um, after his performance uh, in the in the playoffs. Uh, Trey Palmer is an emerging player who's got some speed as well. Um, Chris Godwin is under contract in 2024, and I believe he's an unrestricted free agent in 2025. So there is opportunity just with um, you know Baker Mayfield and the inconsistency and a lot of mouths to feed on that team. Rashad White gets uh, receptions out of the backfield and stuff like that. I give that a C plus. Sorry, two more picks here, guys. 59th overall, one of my favorite receivers, my tier two, tier three receivers. I'll be targeting in all my rookie drafts. Malachi Corley going to the Texans. I'm going to give this a B landing spot. One of my favorite receivers in the draft. Robert Woods is under contract next year, but you got Nico Collins and Tank Dell who have a merge. But I think Malachi Corley could be used really, really well all around the line of scrimmage. Let Nico win the vertical route. Let Tank Dell go at and you know win vertically too. And I think you could keep Corley around the line of scrimmage as this weapon piece that can just be moved all over like a chess piece close to the line of scrimmage. And um, and he's got to compete with Dalton Schultz too. So I gave him a B, not an A. I want a piece of the Texans offense. I think everybody wants a piece of the Texans offense tonight right now. It's a it's an up and coming organization. They've got their quarterback. Um, probably draft a, a running back too in this draft. And the last pick of my show here, Jatavian Sanders going to the Chiefs. I give this an A plus. If Jatavian Sanders, he is this tight end too for most people coming you know, early on in the draft cycle. Okay. He goes to the chiefs. Let's say Travis Kelsey sits, sits, you know, spends another year here to train under him. And with the Andy Reed and the way they use tight ends, he's going to vault up rookie picks big time. A plus Dane, good, good landing spot on this one to end your, um, your mock draft. So there you guys got it, man. I'm going to be doing these kind of shows. If you like it, please hit that subscribe button, man. I freaking love doing this content. It's fun. Um, just trying to do different things on the show. So just reward me, man. Just hit the subscribe, hit the like. I'd appreciate it and be looking out for these. I'm going to be doing probably, I'm going to say 10 to 15 of these before the draft even hits. So thanks for watching.